talk about composite or complex data types. Now, complex or composite data types are simply data types that contain one or more simple uh, data types, the ones that we talked about in the previous lecture. So we've talked about data types that are simple, which are like um, integers or strings and so on. Now we're going to talk about complex, which are data types that are composed of those simple data types. Okay, so first one we're going to talk about is sets. Now, a set is basically a set of values. Okay, it doesn't need to be in other languages. You might need to have the same value, uh, same type of value in a set, but not in closure. Okay, so you can have in the same set, you can have integers, strings, Boolean, uh, functions, or even other complex data types. Okay, so you can have a set within a set. Now, um, these are uh, immutable. So once you create a set, you cannot change it. And that is very, very useful, um, especially when you will do concurrent programming and you will pass a set to another function on another thread. And you can be assured that that function will not um, update or change your set. Okay, they might uh, use your set to create a new set of theirs with other um, components, but the set that you pass uh, will not be changed and you can rely on it to be immutable. Okay, and they are very efficient as well. They are uh, based on trees um, as an underlying structure. Um, we don't really need to worry about that, but just to know that they are efficient and fast to create and manipulate. So here are some examples of sets. So we can have an empty set or we can have a set that contains, um, you know, the number 1, 42, um, 1 1.5. It can contain um, a string like pet and a symbol cat. Now let's talk about maps. Maps are similar to sets in the way that uh, they store uh, values. But in addition to that, they store um, keys associated with those values. Okay. In other languages, you might have them as hashes or hash maps. Um, they are simply called maps in uh, closure. And in the same way, they like sets, they are uh, immutable. So another thread cannot change your map when you are working on it. And they are very efficient to manipulate. So here are some examples of maps you can have a key one and value one as a string, but you can also have um, other types of um, data, okay? So you can have one and 42, two and 1.5, or you can have a string pet uh, as a key and a symbol cat as a value. And let's talk about vectors. Now, vectors are um, arrays in other languages. Um, the same things apply to uh, vectors. They are immutable and they are efficient in the same way that sets and maps are. Um, they are indexed by position. Okay, so you can um, you can take a value based on its. You can access a value based on its position. So you can have a set of one, two, three, four, or you can have a set of one, uh, the string two, and the symbol three or you can have an empty set. Now lists, let's talk about lists. And lists are very, very important in Clojure because they make up the code, okay? So Clojure is a Lisp language and Lisp um, stands for list processor, okay? So everything in Clojure is made up of lists that contain different data types. Now, um, as usual, th same things apply. They are immutable. So once they are created, you cannot change them and they are efficient to work with. So let's give some examples of lists. So here is a list that contains four integers, one, two, three, four. Here is another list that contains one integer, one, the string two, the symbol three, and it contains another list that is composed of one, two, and three. Okay, what about this? Does this look familiar? This is basically a list. Okay, so you might recognize this as recognize it as code as the definition of a function uh, because it has the keyword defn 
it has a foo as a name of the function, it has a empty vector for the arguments, and it has another list for the actual functionality. And inside that second list, you have a keyword and a string. So we can see that a list can be composed of different types. And this particular list is interpreted as a um, function definition, okay? Um, what about this? This is a list with one keyword, and this is interpreted as a definition, as a call to a function, right? So if we have the first argument in a list is the name of a function, that that is interpreted as a call to that function. So we can see that basically everything in Clojure is a list that contains data types, including um, function definitions and including language keywords. So that makes um, the language very simple and very easy to kind of compose um, code on top of each other, sort of like a Lego set, right? So you can take pieces and attach them to other pieces inside other um, lists in our case. So that's it for this lecture. Um, I hope it now starts to become a bit more clear what um, the language is, how the language is composed, um, and what the paradigm behind the language is, um, how you uh, can think about the language, and how you can start to implement functionality for it. So, as usual, thank you for watching uh, this video, and I will see you soon in the next lecture.